this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by James Cook, former European champion. James Cook, MBE, I should immediately correct myself. Um, now part of the Anthony R team, what the, the newest lion in the camp, you might say. Uh, just tell us what brought you back, um, well not back, you already were from the fighters, but what brought you into Anthony Yard's team? Um, I just like the way they are this team, you know, um, at the moment, um, Tunde said, you know, they're a young team and they're nobody else them, so they need a bit of experience. So because they're honest in that sense and they're honest in what I'm saying, so that's what brought them back. And describe for us your role in the team, what, what is it you do day to day? I just, you know, we look at what they do, and if I speak, we talk, and I just talk, and that's what we need to do, like in the sports, you know, the bags, you know, whatever, I see mistake, I'll tell him it's a mistake, this is what he wants to do. And you've known Anthony for a long time. Before you actually joined the team, were there things that you picked up on already that you thought needed working on? Yeah, definitely. You know, he's fight for a world title, you know, he can come up short, you know, that sort of thing won't happen again. I mean, uh, he fight them in the night after that, he come up short again. That won't happen. You know, you don't make him be a bad fighter because he come up short, but sometimes because there's such a clutch in the team, they need somebody to see from the outside and to see where they're coming and, you know, correct whatever mistake I see. And what are the kind of things you're looking at? Is it a bit of everything or is it, you know, footwork? Is it technique, shot selection? Everything, everything they do from footwork, exhibition to movement, everything they do, you know, as a fighter, as a coach, as a player, probably down there. Because I said to them, listen, you can't just get boxing overnight. And sometimes when you're too close, you know, you, I see people they don't see it. That's what I pick up on that. And do you, when you notice something that you want to be worked on, do you go to Anthony directly? Do you go to Tunde first? How does that well, element work? Well, for them, I would call Tunde, then I would say Tunde. I mean, I don't know how that is. Whoever was work, working with my time, I mean, I both of them. I mean, if I don't like it, I'm going to go set that don't work. You know what I'm saying? Try that, do that, you know? So, yeah. And you said if he gets a world title shot again, the same, he won't come up short a second time. Does that mean you believe that he's got the ability to go all the way? Oh, listen, when a man fights for the world title, not come up short. Of course, he's got the ability. I mean, if not, you don't fight for the world title. You know, so the ability is there. You just sometimes do that extra to get you off the line. You know I mean, so I would make sure the extra is done to get him off the line. And talk to us a little bit about your own career, obviously lots of great achievements. You never quite made it to a world title. What do you think it was that stopped you doing it? Well, it's, you know, it's not that I didn't ever make it to a world title. Don't forget I was number one in the WBA. Yeah. But I think at my stage, I was looking at where I was getting the bigger payday. And fighting for the world title was, wasn't going to give me the payday coming to the end of my career. So I took a different tool. Do you, do you regret that at all now? Not, not at all. You can't be in boxing and regret it. I think by that time I was old enough for wise enough. But that time I had four managers. I kind of good, the bad, the ugly, the terrible. <laughs> I mean, so I had four managers at the time. So I, I didn't, you know, so I would not regret it. All I wanted to do was to create somewhere for my family. And I did. So, I did. so what would it mean to you then if you were able to take someone like uh, Anthony Yard to a world title himself? Well, you know, he's not, you know, Anthony's got a team around him. And for me to be part of the team, they can go work that. But this is me a lot. So I literally have to say, well, you make up for the work that and it's actually home. So uh, let me hold your work. Yeah, I'm sure he will let you. He might not let you keep it. <laughs> ten, ten second holding is good enough. You know? How do you balance working here with working with other fighters, or are you fully focused just on Anthony at the moment? No, you know, but with my experience and the knowledge when around fighters, I'm turning ten a different time, then a fighter then ten a different time, then so it's different to be different time. What do you make of this facility here, Box Up Crime in Ilford, and the work they do with the community? And the work they do is, you know, it's great. You know, at the end of the day, I've always said, you well, know, as long as you're a place like this and you like this and you work where they do, you can't go around putting something back and it's not about it. I mean, these guys are putting something back and it's great. And just going back to your career, just a, a few quick fire questions, if you don't mind. What was your proudest moment of your career? I <laughs> think my proudest moment, to be honest, I fought a guy named Tamo Yusufita, and he beat me in 10 rounds in Finland, you know. And this time now it was Almater. You know, the thing is, he would qualify, he says, it was James Cook for James Cook a ball, and it wasn't better than Tamo Yusufita. So I think the proudest moment was to get through the challenge. <laughs> And who would you say was your toughest opponent? My honest opinion, Michael Watson and Errol Christie. 
and they were Christie and Paul's. And who hit the hardest? Um, Michael wants to do this. Aaron Christie was quick and sharp. Michael hit solid. You know what I mean? And you know, the, you know I think what I love about Michael. I think, you know, sometimes things happen when you're too good for your own good. You know, I keep telling people things happen. You have no regret of what happened. You make the sport and every other sport so safe now. You know, I call him my son. You know, he can't be far away, you know? And you, when you speak to him, you say, I can't believe I wasn't being for the You know what I mean? <laughs> and last one for you. If you could go back to your own career, do it all over again, what, if anything, would you change? Um, well, I don't know if I'd change anything. I'd probably take more rest. Yeah. <laughs> more rest. Will you make sure you rest up a bit now? Absolutely, because, you know, I always start to work around the clock. I mean, working with young people, training, working with young people. So, yeah, I think now, if I had to go back, it'd be more rest. Right, well, James, it's a pleasure to, to meet you and to speak to you, and um, best of luck on this new journey. Thanks very much. Thank you.